Hey, you moved my stump. I'm gonna wreck it. I can fix it. Good day, everybody, and welcome back to the show. The new Wreck-It Ralph trailer, uh, let's see, Wreck-It Ralph sequel, which is called Ralph Breaks the Internet, Wreck-It Ralph 2, uh, just dropped in the past couple days, so we're here to discuss it. And we're here to discuss it because, well, for a couple reasons. First of all, I love the original Wreck-It Ralph movie. I think it's one of Disney's best animated films. And secondly, it's also very video game related. You know, it's... Uh, it's, it's what I think is, is one of the best video game movies, for sure. And so it's got a little bit of relevance, you know? It's, got, it's clearly based on Donkey Kong, and there are all sorts of classic characters involved and such. So, naturally, we want to discuss the sequel, um, Ralph Breaks the Internet. So, Chris, what did you think of this trailer? Did it make you want to say, I want to wreck it? Or did it make you say, I want to Ralph? <laughs> it definitely the latter. Uh, oh. I believe that's specifically what I wrote in large quotation marks. Ralph. Oh, that's what that meant. Yes. I thought you were kind of like doing like a con thing, you know, like Ralph. No, this isn't Ralph's fault. This isn't Ralph. But fault. Ralph is a useful onomatopoeia for vomiting. So. Sure. Uh, and it's the, the classic dry heave. Exactly. Exactly. So um, what's 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 the issue, Chris? What what are, what are you well, feeling right first now? First of all. The title. Okay. Ralph Breaks the Internet, Wreck-It Ralph 2. My main problem with this, at least, well, the first one that jumps out at me is that the original title of the film, Wreck-It Ralph, there's a word in that title that already means to break something. Wreck. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So why wouldn't they call it Ralph Wrecks Ralph the Internet? Ralph Wrecks the Internet. Come on. Come on. Um, no, see, I'm, I'm wondering that, too. And my, I, I was talking to my sister-in-law, Mari, about this, and she said that, you know, Breaks the Internet is, is kind of like an internet slang thing. You know, every now and then something... Something big happens and everybody's talking about it, so it it breaks the internet, you know. So I guess they're they're taking that term, which I mean, when she when she brought it, when she said it that way, I was like, okay, I I, I guess I I have heard that term before. It didn't really jump out to me as a particularly noteworthy term to, to title a whole movie based off. But yeah, I, I think if you just called it Rec Ralph wrecks the internet, you pretty much imply it, it's Wreck It Ralph, and you kind of tell what the what the story's about. So. I don't know. It's it's a weird title. Well, that actually gets to the root of the main problem, I think. If that was their train of thought, if they actually were thinking, well, this term breaks the internet is kind of used online, you know, to describe something that's really popular or that mm -hmm. is a big deal. Like, if that was their train of thought in picking the title, then that that is a ominous sign for the film because in this trailer, all we see are internet references and slangs and memes and kind of dated things as well. Like eBay, who uses eBay anymore? Come on. <laughs> I used eBay pretty recently. No, you didn't. Okay. So, I, I, okay. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, um, so you're worried about, you're worried about the timelessness of, uh, of this based off, of, based off the trailer. Yeah. Like, uh, okay. I'm not sure exactly where to start here, but, um, well, let's start at the beginning of the trailer. It starts with uh, Flitwick's arcade getting the, you know, getting the Wi-Fi back online. Uh, apparently this place, I mean, it looks pretty old-fashioned, like he's got kind of an old Mac or something. And uh, and so Ralph and Vanellope, uh, the stars from the first film, end up bouncing around through the internet. And it seems like, you know, they're basically running around this cybernetic world um, that's that's metaphorically the internet. And it's showing them ads and, like... You know, like you said, eBay stuff, and there's I think there's a flash game near the end, and uh, I guess they're they're basically just kind of reacting in wonder to all this stuff, and it's it's yeah, it's it's kind of a bunch of jokes that are that are like, how, how would you describe it, Chris? I'm kind of at a loss here. Grown worthy. Um, Grown worthy. Oh, you're, you're bringing that, bringing out that old chestnut, the old cringe. It's Yes, it's, it, it all relies on the fundamental level of, oh, they don't know what the internet is. I, as a member of the audience, know what the internet is. Ha ha, how funny it is that they're just learning about this stuff for the first time. And I know better than Ralph because Ralph is like looking at all these internet ads and being interested in them. Oh, but I know that they're just silly ads that nobody should click on. But Ralph doesn't understand that yet because he's like a total newbie to the internet. So that's the humor. Right. Like that's that's such a dumb joke. Ugh. I think I think fish out of water stuff can work. And it usually does work, but I, I think in this instance, I'm not a fan of, of this particular theme. I feel like we've seen this kind of thing before. And uh, there was an old Futurama episode where they, they the gang pretty much does this for like the first act of the episode. 
um, they go they go into the internet essentially and walk around. There's ads and there's various things, and I don't know. The internet is just sometimes it's just such an annoying place that I don't really want to see. I don't want to see the world of the internet all that much, you know. Yeah, that's the like thing. The so, BuzzFeed articles and the and the cat stuff, and it's like ah, I don't know. Wreck It Ralph one is basically celebrating video games, but it doesn't bog the movie down, so you don't have to be like a total gamer to enjoy the movie. It's a it's a good movie. Yeah. It's fun. It's enjoyable. Uh, but and it's it's not just like a robot chicken sketch. You know, you'll start off with a lot of game references and things, but then you start to learn the characters. And then they have like these rules of of transferring between the games and the arcade, and it's all really neat. And even even in the second half, when they're pretty much in one game for most of the most of the movie, there's still all the the gamer elements. You know, there's glitching, there's like the cheat codes, there's there's a boss that's like a bad guy from another game who's like messing with the code of the game. So it it all fits together really well, and and it becomes a, a celebration of of arcade gaming. Which, you know, even though it's dated, it's also got kind of a timeless classic quality to it. Yes. Um, an immediate parallel to draw is the Emoji movie. Like, that... I, I, I'm not seeing a huge difference here in terms of... Oh, man. The, the humor that's being presented and the product placement and the just... It just feels as skeevy as the uh, Emoji movie, honestly. But and, and I, I will, fighting words, Chris. I will uh, qualify that by saying that this is just a trailer... We've seen lousy trailers from Disney before. I mean, Toy Story 3 with the, I don't know, those aren't Lincoln Logs. Oh, um, that's a good joke. That's no, a good it, it was a terrible trailer. That's a good joke. Terrible well, trailer. All right. Did you like that joke more in, in the context of the movie? Yeah, it wasn't as bad. It was not as egregious. But I didn't. I still didn't like it, no. Uh, yeah, that's that pretty, good. pretty good. No, but I'd, anyway. I'm not above a little poop humor every now and then. Every now and then, you know. A little bit, just a little bit of poop. And look at look at Frozen. Moment. Remember the first Frozen ads, where it was like just the snowman and uh, the, oh yeah, the no, I think the Rapunzel ads were worse. The Tangle ads, where where it's like she's like attacking uh, Flynn with with her hair, like it's like the sentient tentacle or uh, something. Oh yeah, yeah, that was really crazy. So you know, this is just our initial impressions, and I mine aren't quite as negative as yours, Chris, but they are still. I, I pretty much agree with. With all your, with pretty much all you're saying, just kind of in less, uh, with less intensity, I right. guess you'd say. I, I, I don't really have a connection to this, this internet theme. I kind of wish this was just kind of a new IP. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Mr. I goes on the internet, you know, this crazy thing goes online. And it's like, okay, why not just, there, there's so many things you could do still with video games with the world of Wreck-It Ralph. You could do home console gaming. You could, I don't know, they could move into like the 16-bit or 32-bit era, or they can move into like, the polygonal era, you know, that may be fun. But the internet is just, it's, it feels too much of a jump from arcade games, you know? Yeah. It's still, they're still both digital, but I mean, the similarity is pretty much in there. The time frame of Wreck-It Ralph is a little bit nebulous, but yeah. I, I believe it's at least in like the early 2000s, because if you look at um, Sugar Rush, the graphics in the game are pretty good. Like it's, it's clearly at least like an early 2000s kind of game in terms of graphics, right? That's true. You could probably make the argument that Sugar Rush and uh, Call of Honor, or Call, whatever, Hero Hero's Duty. Yeah, there you go. And Hero's Duty. They, I mean, they were they were supposed to be more modern games. The movie itself didn't actually take place in the '80s, but a, a lot of it took place in an early '80s arcade game. Right. So, right. Um, but I, yeah, I, I still think there's all sorts of ways they could have gone about, you know, expanding that world of video games. Yeah, I, I think an easy way to move forward, like what made mo most sense to me thinking about a sequel, would be. Well, what about the decline of arcades? Like in America, arcades are like almost non-existent nowadays and exploring yeah. how that actually, you know, plays out would be really interesting and like meaningful to anyone who cares about games. Um, yeah. But clearly it seems to me that they're just trying to reach for a wider audience. Like all the kids know about the internet. Kids don't know about arcades. Like arcades mean nothing to kids these days. So um, it, it feels a little cynical. It feels a little cheap and like it's kind of cheapening the property, honestly. Yeah. I can I can see that I I I do like that uh that premise that you've uh, proposed there. I mean that that that's a, yeah that sort of poignancy really works with stuff like Toy Story as well. Yeah. Lincoln Logs aside. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are, are Lincoln Logs sentient? Uh. Yeah, I don't. That one for I don't a while. think. <laughs> I don't think in Toy Story the uh, like every part of something is sentient. Like like Mr. Potato Head's feet aren't sentient. 
Oh, it's so, mostly like so the set of Lincoln logs would be sentient, but not each individual log. Well, maybe not even the set, because like it's not even a creature, you know. Well, it's not like is a, it the box? A creature with parts. Hey, what, but what about like the puzzles? Wouldn't be sentient, right? But there's toys that don't, there's toys that aren't creatures that still are sentient, like the um, the talking play or whatever, the microphone. Oh yeah, 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 Mr. Spell. Yeah, he's not a Mr. he's Spell. not a creature. He's, he's got alive. a face though. He's got a face. Oh, so if you have a face, you're worthy of life. Man, but... don't don't get me into the rules of Toy Story. They, they're <laughs> crazy. If you think about like how all the toys inherently agree to these unspoken rules of, of like not talking to humans, mm -hmm. you'd think there'd be some toy like even the most evil toys follow these rules. Even, even when at the it's price like, of their life. Even the price of their life. Yeah, which is yeah. crazy to me. You think there'd be some toy out there that would ruin it for everyone and go on TV and be like, yeah, all the toys are alive. What are you gonna do about it? Give me money. Give me attention. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but no one does that. In fact, the only the only toy that does that in the series is Woody himself. Yeah, that's something to wrap your mind around. Woody did do it with the cooperation of other toys, though. They they also performed. Yeah, he was in front of Sid. He was, yes. the, yes. he was the ringleader. That was his idea. Right. So anyway, back to Ralph. Uh, what'd you think of the of the the bunny joke with the pancakes? Uh, okay, so I feel like that's the sort of thing that. If you really want to make that as a as a promotional thing, fine. But are we really going to watch that whole scene in the film and it's like contextualized by some setup? And I don't know. Is, is there some sort of story significance to this scene? I can't imagine that there is. I, di I didn't get much from it. I uh, I've seen I've seen the you know feeding to the pop thing before. I remember it was a really in a really gross Yoshi's Island commercial. Yeah, back in the yeah. mid nineties. Back in the Play It Loud era, it was so gross. Yep, yep. And my parents were like, oh, what is that? And it was, they, were, they were advertising for Yoshi's Island, which is like the cuddliest game. I guess they, they felt like they had to appeal to, uh, I don't know, the teens with this game about Baby Mario. I don't know. Nintendo was finding themselves then. They were, they were still searching for their identity. They had that gross game called Earthbound that came out. We were like, all oh, that. Oh, so gross. <laughs> so it was gross. like everything was farts and burps and piles of vomit this game stinks you don't believe how smelly this game is as we play it's like not really doesn't really well it, it is pretty quirky but i mean it's yeah they, they were definitely yeah. they were definitely appealing to like the booger man and the and the nickelodeon crowd there yeah. the Rin stimpy crowd everything's slimy and dripping and sticky and gross. <laughs> sticky and gross that's what kids like <laughs> uh. So yeah, we keep we keep getting off subject here, but uh, Wreck It Ralph, uh, yeah. So we're not we're not too big on it, but uh, it seems like the rest of the internet seems to like it. So what the heck? I don't get it. I mean, I'm, I I don't want to be upset at people for liking Wreck It Ralph stuff, but I'm just I'm just hoping the the final direction of the movie, you know, when you go out and see it, is is it's more in line with the original idea and less like I just I just don't want like all the meme humor, you know, the dated humor. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm starting to think that trailers are deliberately misrepresenting the films for marketing purposes. So say this is actually a good film. Say it's a worthy follow up to Wreck-It Ralph. Their yeah. marketing department, they're taking whatever's in the movie that will appeal most to the widest audience. And it seems to be successful in this case. Uh, obviously, look at other films that have failed in this regard, like the Ghostbusters remake or uh, oh, like the trailer for Star Trek Beyond. It, apparently, that's that's like the best Star Trek movie. I haven't even seen it because after seeing the trailer, I was like, well, this looks terrible. I don't want to see that. So it seems to me that the people making these trailers aren't trying to tell a discriminating viewer, hey, this is a good movie. They're trying to rope in all the like... They put in maybe the, like the most broad humor in the movie. Yeah, they're putting in the broadest humor, the broadest references, the things that most people, that the largest number of people will connect with. And I think they realize that the discriminating audience who actually, for instance, someone who's a Star Trek fan or a Star Wars fan or a Wreck-It Ralph fan, they're probably going to go see the movie anyway. So they don't actually need to attract those people or reel them in. So they're actually trying to reach to, to new audiences, people who might not otherwise see the movie, who haven't heard of Wreck-It Ralph, who don't even know about video games, but they know about internet. So they say, oh, well, I like this meme or th this reminds me of something I, I, I know about. So, oh, so this movie's now on my radar, whereas previously it wouldn't have been. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I think I actually have a really good example of that too, because I think I, I think it might be onto something. Okay. The uh, Paddington trailer ah. had turned me off the movie for like two years. I was like, ah, oh, this movie looks so gross. It's nothing like Paddington Bear. You know, the the old stories where he's kind of this gentle character. He's like 
He's like up in the bathroom and and he's sticking the toothbrushes in his ears and pulling out these globs of earwax. And yeah. he like tastes them and he's like it does that thing in movies where where a character's like stumbling and they're going whoa <laughs> and they're like grabbing on everything and everything's breaking whoa and they just can't get their their balance and it's just this this crazy chaotic scene that goes on for like a minute and a half and it feels nothing like Paddington but Everybody was saying how much they liked this movie. So eventually, I saw it like a month ago on Netflix, and I thought it was great. I thought it was really good. And the only thing I didn't like about it was that earwax part, which was like the one thing in the trailer. So hopefully, you know, Wreck It Ralph can can pretty much be like that, where uh, the, the the all the all the all the character development, all the all the neat elements of the of the story and stuff, really shine through in the movie itself rather than the trailer, which has kind of the. The quickest gags. I guess that's that's kind of the nature of movie trailers is you have to grab someone's attention really fast with with something easily um, understandable. You know, a, a lot of the a movie's best jokes, you have to like know the characters, you have to know the setup. Yeah. Or it might be this long form kind of gag where there's like a setup and then it escalates into a big massive payoff. So, um, yeah, I think I think it might be onto something there. Yeah, maybe we're just becoming like old fogies who these ads aren't actually targeting. And if the trailer's bad but the movie's good, I actually don't really care. But if, yeah, yeah. But That's if they're true. actually putting, if they're actually starting to change the movies to be, you know, dumber or less. Uh, uh, creatively interesting then then that's where i have the problem so we'll we'll see about this one but uh the the trailer was was definitely not encouraging i think yeah you know if that's that's really the bottom line if as long as the movies turn out good we don't we don't care if the trailers are bad if this movie leaves behind its gaming heritage uh will that affect your enjoyment of the film even if the rest of the you know the story and the characters or whatever are, are fine um yeah that's a pretty good question i think with with anything any sort of form of media i think there are certain elements that speak to us more yeah and they're not necessarily objective elements they could be something like i don't know certain themes let's say this movie has a theme that really resonates with me and this movie has a different theme that it's not really doesn't affect my life really but it's it's still well done i'm probably going to find more emotional resonance in the themes that that i can relate to so yeah i would I think I would enjoy having the video game aspect still be present than, you know, not being present and even if the movie itself is still executed well. Because that, that's, I mean, I can I can get not video game stuff from a bunch of movies, you know? Yeah. But from Ralph, the, the, the video game stuff is, is a neat extra dimension to it and an extra element to the, to the films. I mean, I like the characters as well, but the video game stuff really kind of makes it something all its own, I find. All right, well, that I guess that wraps up our thoughts on the Wreck-It Ralph trailer, Wreck-It Ralph 2 trailer. Ralph, Ralph, wrecks, Ralph does, doesn't wreck the internet. He breaks it, apparently. So uh, let us know what you thought. Let us know if we're, if we're too grumpy or if we're right on the money. And keep your ears posted to this channel because we'll be putting up some new stuff very soon as well as a big surprise I have in store for everybody in a few weeks. Smell your flip side. Smell your, on the flip side. No, smell your flip, flip side. Smell remember? your flip side. Smell your... I don't think those are Lincoln Logs. <laughs> uh, smell your Lincoln Logs. Nerd, I do nudes. <clears throat> nudes. Nudes. I do nude scene. I play nerd. I do nudes. <coughs> Boy.